Hello and welcome to another episode of Ignite Your Purpose. I'm JB from healthyfunkyfree.com and uh, my bro over there or over there, which way, whichever way it is, that's Max from Massimo.com and the Positive Vibes Lifestyle Movement. I'm never quite as funky as he is. He's, uh, he's, he's got experience. He's got the, uh, the rock and roll history on him, so uh, he knows how to rock the mic. But <laughs> rock the mic. That, is, that I do. And that'd be funny if your name actually was Mike. Yeah. So we are going to talk a little bit about uh, cleansing today. Max has just started a, a bit of a cleanse under supervision from one of his dudes. Um, and so I'll, I'll let him get on with it and uh, I'll chip in from time to time with some stuff that you may find interesting and you may not. So Truth. Max, roll. What is up, beautiful people? Thank you again for joining us. I always appreciate your time for letting me ramble, tell my stories. John, look at that. I think I did it right this time. Is always the man with the facts and the science. I just tell stories. I just, I just drop my knowledge on my personal journey. And I'll go back to my upbringing as always, eating that sad American diet, standard North American diet, sad diet, right? Uh, coming from that Italian background with the food which is a beautiful thing. Don't get me twisted. Italian food is amazing. Um, however, for this poor little kid, um, cheeses, pastas, and breads did not work for me. And I ate them for a long, long time. So imagine the damage it was doing internally. And I can remember the issues I had growing up with bathroom stuff. You know what I mean? Um, hence, we'll fast forward to eight years ago when I began my journey with the Asian healing powers from ancient uh, knowledge. and I sat in there, buddy took my pulse, and he said, you know, basically what you need, think of it as your car, is you need an oil change. I didn't think much of it. He put me on this cleanse. First week is liver and gallbladder. Interesting, right? Second week yeah. is the colon cleanse. Um, and basically what you're doing is it's, there's a billion different types of cleanses out there, so please, as always, do your own research. Check your own facts. You have to have some intuition you have to have some self-knowledge about your own body what will and won't work with you how dedicated you are but you're basically taking out anything acidic you're not eating any red meat you're not having coffee and you're not having any sugars and i, I classify that in in the white the white flowers right crackers pizzas um cheeses um eggplants weren't allowed in there a, a few other things but you're just basically avoiding those and then you're also taking these pills um and the first time I did it, the first time I did this, and if I stood up right now, I'm like, I tell you, I tell this every time, I'm a little, little man. Powerful as shit, but I'm a little, little man. Um, I'm about 5'5", five, 5'6", five 125. The first time I did this, I lost 11 pounds from the inside, people. Like, it's not like I, of course, my, you know, six-pack turned into an eight-pack, right? But I lost gunk from the inside that's the best way I could put it to you um, and the reason I've continued to do this fall and spring every year since is because it's it's amazing for the body to heal itself um, and you're just you're on point when it comes to uh, energy levels and your body running clean um, to know what it is to feel clean inside is I can only go back to nine years ago where I was at with mental fogginess, being tired at such a young age in the afternoon, reaching for, you know, the big fat coffees with tons of sugar in it to try and get, you know, your energy boost, that mental fog, um, and just feeling bloated and, and tired in general, not having energy. I'm telling you, I've done it twice a year since, and it's one of my secret, uh, you know, something I keep in the backpack for secret stash because among with a numerous amount of other things, that's one of the things that changed my life for the better on the road to leading to fulfillment and happiness. And it is by far, it's something we all need to do. And if you go to any ancient religion, any ancient tribe, they all do it. Um, you just have to find your niche for what you want to do. That's my rant, John, so far. We can get back into more, but why don't you tell them about your fun little, your version of it? Well, 
One second. I'm just going to show everybody this because I've just spotted it in my background. Amen. That's what I'm saying. This is true. That's Health matters. Health comes first, baby. This is solid fact for me in my Health life. Health is the keyhole to everything. Um, I haven't really lined up my, uh, my spiel today, my, uh, my rant and my ramble, so it will be a ramble. I, I've done the, uh, the cleanse that Max has done. Uh, we, we visit them uh, once every couple of years and we check in with their, their, uh, their, their Japanese Amatsu doctor and he, he put us on the cleanse. And I can, I can reiterate that once you have reduced the amount of stuff you're putting in at the top of the funnel, <laughs> good food, bad food, whatever it is, it all needs processing you give your, your insides a chance to heal. Uh, I, I, I believe we all, you, I'm trying to think of a word. Yeah, yeah, everything changes so slowly day in, day out. You don't kind of appreciate how you feel on any given day because it's more or less the same as it was yesterday and the day before, but gradually over time, you, you probably feel much, much different. Um, it's like if it's, yeah, but it's always or that or the other way. Yeah, and we all know that the the, the body replay the body completely regenerates itself. You get new hair, new teeth, new eyes, new cells, and it varies on the amount of time with which that happens, but it all happens because the body has got the spare energy and capacity to do that. And the healthier it is, the better copies it makes of things. And the less healthy it is, the less better copies it makes of itself. So, um, and it makes itself or repairs itself through the things that you eat. So if you want to know what kind of condition you're in or how good a condition you're in or not, take a look in the mirror and then think about everything you've eaten over the past week or month or two months or three months or four months. And you think that amazing organic raw salad with this tahini lemon dressing, mm. nutritiously dense, it's got all the building blocks in there and very little uh, acidic forming toxic uh, elements of it. Or you look at the McDonald's or the popcorn. I saw a baby eating popcorn at a football match a couple of days ago, and she could have sat in the bucket. And if you think, uh, when, when you're a baby and you're growing, you need, them, you need great stuff, and popcorn's not it. So if you look at yourself, what kind of condition am I in? Look at what you're eating. But to go back to the sort of the cleansing, and we've, we've not done too many. We've done one uh, with, with Christian, uh, Max's friends, and we did, we, did a, we did a detox right at the beginning of this journey three years ago. We decided that we we're going to have a detox. So Emma is the, uh, the, is the planner. So it was planned to the end. We had a list of what we were going to eat at certain times of the day. And on the very first night, Emma was up in the middle of the night taking paracetamol because of the headaches. And I was up at night. My head was throbbing. It was, it was what's going on. Uh, and it's because you go through a detox program and your body craves these things that we eat we don't know about um yes but we so, so we then went through these days and that was the, the the decider we can't have these headaches and be up whenever we want to have a detox so we just decided to to eat less processed crap um but the thing is like i say if you've got this stuff going in the top the more you've got going in there the the, the more the body has to process all of that that stuff, that, that, that food that's not easily digestible before it starts looking after your body. Um, and you're taking so much energy just to do that yeah. out of your body. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, Max, you can ramble a bit. I've kind of lost my train. That I didn't have before no, it began. It so. was per always perfect, brother, because you gave me this point. You know, you, 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 you were saying there numerous times, you know, eat healthy. And here's the issue I have. If you have no self-awareness, and I'm not, I'm not judging, I'm speaking from myself. 
when I had no self-awareness, when I had no education, no knowledge on what the fuck is healthy eating. Everybody tells me they eat healthy. And then I go there and I watch what they make and it boggles my mind because they think they're eating healthy because they're not eating at a fast food joint. But the stuff they're cooking and none of it's healthy. You know what I mean? It's coming from a cardboard box and they think that's healthy. We people, we have to educate ourselves on what is healthy, which is why I firmly believe in a plant-based diet. I'm not saying don't eat meat. I'm saying, but it needs, you need to eat a shit ton of plants and veggies, plants and veggies, fruits and veggies. Um, This is mandatory. Look at any, any ancient tribe, man. It was, it was what they did. Um, And my man, you know, I was on a firm belief that, for a while after watching some of the movies we did, I was on a firm belief that vegan and vegetarian was the way to go until I read Paul Check's book. People, if you have a second, check out Paul Check from the Check Institute. Um, his book right here. I take this with me on the beaches. It's, it's amazing. It's got, um, it's got everything in it. If you're a beginner, even if you're seasoned or intermediate, grab this book. It is phenomenal. Um, and one thing he says is, which was schooled me on, I'm getting a little bit off cleansing here, but the, the meat thing, tribes ate meat, but they didn't eat it seven times a day. Like some of the people we know nowadays and going back to cleansing, if you are doing that, do you understand that that meat does not digest? It sits in your stomach for a massive amounts of time so that the next time you eat all the whatever you want to call it that's inside the body. I, John probably knows that word. I don't. We'll call it microbiism, microbiisms, whatever those little things that are eating food and getting us healthy have to take more time going in there. And then the healthy stuff might either just pass through your system or whatever it does because you aren't clean within. Get clean within. Get some knowledge on how your body works. This all comes back to self-awareness. It's a journey every day, people. It's not like you're just going to do one course or one thing and have it finished. It's a lifelong journey for longevity. That's another one of my rants. I appreciate your time. Well, talk for another few seconds because there's a word I can't remember. Uh, so, I'm okay. Sorry. No, okay. Um, and again, cleansing. Uh, I have so many people come up to me, and, and I'm not, again, trying to brag. I had a gentleman come up to me last night asking me about the cleanse that I'm on. Um, I'm already down two pounds, you know, and I eat clean as shit. This, this last year, I didn't eat meat for eight or nine months. Um, by choice. Um, I spent some time in a very warm climate, so I, I kind of wanted to just be a fruititarian. Um, I definitely did notice that um, because I do CrossFit and Olympic lifting, my lifts went down a little, fair enough, whatever. Um, but I had so much energy, it was amazing. Um, and even on this cleanse, I'm down two pounds already. W- what's inside me? I didn't eat meat. You see what I'm saying, people? You've got to clean yourself out. Okay. Word, right? um, I j- I've got no idea. Oh, time. We'll finish so on we'll, the rant. We'll come to a convenient point. But um, on Saturday, I am going for, um, I can't remember the word, colonoscopy. I'm going to have a pipe in my bum, <laughs> and they're going to put water in, and they're going to clean out my lower colon. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Feel awesome afterwards, feel energized and hydrated. But the, the, the point of this is, I, I've been a vegan for about a year now, not anal, get the, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if, if there's a piece of cheese lands on the plate, I'm okay. But, but I've basically got a plant-based diet. Um, and I went for a, a clean out as we call it. Probably I've not had meat or, or chicken for about six months. And I went for one of these treatments and Jill, who, who does the treatment, she says, oh my, John, there's a piece of chicken in there. So that had been inside of me for, excuse me, six months. So that just show, goes to show how long it takes to process. There you go. Now, some and, things. and we're not saying, yeah, and we're not saying. I'm not saying don't eat it, but I'm saying yeah. if you're going to eat it, you've got to chew it and 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 get it really masticated and broken down. So the body has an easier time of, of, of getting this stuff out. And it's, it's the same for nuts and seeds and everything we eat. This is, we all like blending and having blends. Well, this is our blender. But quite often, 
we don't blend. We just kind of chew, chew, break it a bit, swallow. Yeah. And the, 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 the stomach, it will not break it apart. It will, um, it will do a poor job of removing the, uh, the vitamins and minerals and the enzymes and the, all the rest of it. Because this and the saliva is what's the start of yeah. the whole breakdown process, right? Yeah. And again, going back to Paul Check, one of the things he did before I would say the conspiracy of Big Pharma got involved was he found books of people in the 1900s that studied tribes, vegetarians, tribes, well, whatever. They, they, they found that they were very healthy, but they always found a tribe near them that had more access to meat. And they found back in the day that those tribes that ate the meat in what back then would have been smaller portions were healthier than the people who didn't. Now, these are just some opinions. So I'm not against meat um, by any means. I took it out of my diet for a little while. I got sick a little while ago and my body, again, being in tune with yourself, my body told me, son, you need to eat meat. And I, I still haven't, I have not had red meat for probably 10 years, but I will eat chicken and fish um, and I source it. I source it, I source it, I source it. I go organic. I go to the smallest farms possible so that I know the little guys were treated humanely. Um, and that's where I'll end my rant. But I am, um, I... I don't know the ins and the outs of, of how much they did or didn't eat, but I can certainly look to the people I know uh, who, who live out in China and Asia at the moment. And they, they, they all eat meat and they all eat chicken and all eat fish. But what my understanding is, is very it's in there to season whatever they're, they're using. There's a very small amount of it and it's not every day. It's just in there to create a flavor within a certain dish. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Maybe, maybe we'll continue this talk. We'll have a part two because we're, we're just rambling on. We got lots of knowledge. So let's do that. Yeah. Uh, people, I think, I think we should probably wrap it up, John. Yeah. I've got to be somewhere. So um, we'll say goodbye for now. And we'll, uh, we'll get, we recorded a, another one last week. So we'll pop that up pretty soon. You bet. Although you've seen that already by the time you see this. So <laughs> ignore that. The sun's shining in people. Sorry about that. Love you all. Talk to you soon. John, I love Bye -bye. you. Peace. Talk soon. Peace in the Middle East.